In Leah Millia's analysis of Betty Ross, she paints a picture of a figure that Ross was made into off of just a normal woman. She explained how Ross became more of an American icon whose story was told and retold over several generations and with new details, new experiences, but how no American uh, cared because she was a face for freedom. While there are probably other figures in history like Betty Ross, not all historical figures are portrayed in the same way. Mercy Otis Warren is one such figure. She was born and bred into a system and family of political interests. Her father was a politician turned patriot in the Continental Army, and her husband's family came over to America on the Mayflower. So she grew up in a really politically tense time and was from a young age interested in the causes of democracy or lack thereof. She also began to write from a young age, and as America was drawing nearer to war with England, she began to focus her writings on the real-world drama she saw unfolding before her. One of the articles I read by Cheryl Oriobix regarded Warren as a literal heroine when it came to political writings. She stated of Warren's writings that the vision that she articulates encompasses what historians have come to refer as the Republican synthesis which is the commitment of citizens to both public and private virtue in their own lives so that the commonwealth may flourish. Obviously, she was a woman, and she was able to, wasn't able to bring herself to the front lines of the fight for independence. So as Oriovix and another author, Friedman, stated, writing was her way to serve, and she was, she was a respected confidant of important members of the revolutionary leadership. If Mercy Warren could offer the cause neither sword nor pulpit, she used her pen. Warren was probably best known for her history of the rise, progress, and termination of the American Revolution, which was a large volume history of her account of the revolution. However, she was also a poet, a playwright, and she completed multiple essays in regards to the Revolutionary War efforts that were all published in the Massachusetts Spy and the Adulator, which were two publications of the time, both pre and post, pre, during, and post American Revolution. She wrote these play these plays and these essays on the political tension she saw. A lot of her writings before she published her History of the Revolution were focused on the patriots and those fighting for freedom in the colonies being portrayed as lowly or as the underdog or as suffering a great bit of turmoil from that of the British. And the British were always portrayed as the enemy. They were always portrayed as soul-sucking and just not caring about the colonists. Um, and she would use different characters and things to show that in her essays and also wrote poet poetry about that. So that was all something that she published prior to the war and then would intertwine that into what was happening and the things um, going on in the Massachusetts Bay Area prior to the beginning of war. Someone she admired greatly was John Adams. However, she was only in an admiration of him until he became a Federalist and took a stance on the Constitution year la years later that she did not agree with as a Republican. She was always pro-Jefferson, however, and according to Fried Friedman, President Jefferson referred to Mercy Warren's high station in the rank of genius and ordered copies of her history for all federal department heads. Warren was also a partisan historian. She had very Republican-leaning ways, but, but within the article that I read by Freedom and Sh Friedman and Schaefer, they do describe her later writings of her book as being unbiased. They explain that she refrained from bias in the final chapters of her book going so far as to even refraining from endorsing the Republican Party and did not use Thomas Jefferson's name. They said that she was unwilling to underline her strong Republican sympathies and that her history was devoted to a strongly patriotic theme that had become a staple of a new American nationalism. She celebrated the new nation and the revolution that produced it as major steps towards fulfilling God's plan for mankind. The final article I read was one by Martha King, where she described more of the feminine side of Warren and how that impacted her writings and her view of the revolution. She stated that Warren conceded that it was a male prerogative to write about bloody battlefields and politics, but felt that it was a great, um, great for a woman to write in her own words, believing that it was her ability to sympathize with her subjects 
that would elevate the level of impartiality. King also went on to say that Mercy believed it was precisely because of her gender that she was well positioned to write a history of the revolution. So in all of the research that I did on Warren and analyzing what was found, I truly believe that Warren is portrayed as who she truly was. From the things I read and the things that I learned about her, she was a Massachusetts colonist who, from a young age, believed in the fight for independence. She also very much benefited from her location being in the Massachusetts area, as well as her husband being involved in the Massachusetts government, which gave her a lot of access to documents and information from those key players in the fight for independence. She also had been in the throes of political tension from a young age, so she was well equipped to understand, learn, and fight for more um, freedom, so to speak, in the political context. What Warren left behind was a large collection of writings and experiences of what it was like to be a player in the unfolding of the American Revolution. And as a woman, she truly made her name and position known by using her pen to fight.